It's been a while since we talked. That's the way it is with your kids, though, right? You never talk as much as you'd like. Used to. <laughs> They'd hang on every word, every story, every joke, every little song. <laughs> we had some times. Some amazing times. <laughs> But then they got a little older, a little wiser is how one of them put it. And he said he knew he didn't know everything, but uh, he knew enough to know that my ways, my values, my philosophies on life were a little too... Well, basically they wanted their freedom. Then my kids, I gave them what they wanted. Little by little, I watched them change. Push back against the things I taught them, lose heart. You know, they tried so, so hard to steer clear of me. I wanted nothing more than to have things right between us. So I kept doing things. Sent letters, called, left voicemail. I even sent messages through friends. Nothing. No response. Now, whether it was that they thought the distance between us was too great or uh, they were ashamed. You know, it really doesn't matter. You know, when they were little, I used to tell them over and over again, I love you, no matter what. Got to be a, a thing between us. I would say, I love you, and they'd finish it, no matter what. <laughs> they heard it so often that sometimes they just roll their eyes when I said it. But I, I wanted to make it so, so clear to them that there was nothing they could do to make me stop loving them. And that thing I said, it's never stopped being true. So I'm packing up and I'm going to them. I'm not bringing any presents. Just a gift to making things right. There's nothing that'll separate me from my kids. Not the past, not the future. Nothing. Nothing. I'm forgetting about all the stuff in the past. And the relationship we used to have? Well, we're going to have a new relationship. After this trip, things will never be the same with us. That's a good thing. New beginnings. That's what I'm all about. That's my plan for this Christmas. A new beginning with my kids. Webster defines reconciliation as to conciliate anew what that means. It goes on to say, it is to call back into union and friendship the affections which have been alienated. To restore to friendship or favor after estrangement. The father on the one hand is a real father with real problems and a real broken relationship with his children. On the other hand, I hope you caught that He's a portrait of God to us this morning. And He brings with Him an accurate description of the relationship that we have had or may still have towards our God. He makes the comment that has to be what went through the mind of God that as we began to contemplate that very first Christmas. 
I love my kids and there's nothing that will separate me from my kids. Not the past, not the future. After this Christmas, nothing will be the same again. That's a good thing. New beginnings, that's what I'm all about. That's my plan this Christmas. In Romans chapter 5, Paul makes the statement that, that says, sin came into the world through one man. Through one man, sin entered into the human story and it messed everything up. It messed up our union with God, our friendship with God, our relationship with God. It was greatly affected. We became estranged from God according to the Scriptures. Our broken relationship because of us. And like a loving father, God determined that, that He yet loved His children and that nothing, not the past, not the future, would keep us apart. We read in Isaiah chapter 43 that God had decided upon a solution, though at the time of its writing it had yet to become a reality. Isaiah declares, but now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fires, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you, I give men in return for you, people in exchange for your life. Fear not, I am with you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe Me and understand that I am He. Before Me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after Me. I, I am the Lord. And besides Me there is no Savior. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I, I am He who blots out your transgressions for My own sake, and I will not remember your sin. Isaiah, long before it ever came to pass, said that, that God determined amongst Himself that He would be our Savior because we're precious in His sight. He, he loves us. And so He's going to give flesh and blood in order to redeem us and in exchange for our lives. He declares to be our only hope, our only Savior. He's doing a new thing on our behalf. He's blotting out our transgressions and our sins. God will set things right. He will make all things new. And so this Christmas we celebrate the gift of reconciliation as we celebrate Christmas. I believe Isaiah 43 kind of sums up what Webster says is the action of reconciliation. To call back into union and into friendship the affections that have been alienated. Friendships or favor restored that had once been estranged. I mean, Paul says in Romans 5 that through one man sin entered the world, but he speaks further on the matter. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man Jesus Christ abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. 
For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned throughout that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Once sin entered the scene, it dominated over all of life and all of humanity was affected by it. But at the coming of Jesus Christ, that first Christmas night, as the Christ child came into the world, we were reconciled to God through Jesus. A relationship that was once broken is restored. A friendship that was once estranged is now made new. Every day becomes a new day, and every day becomes a day of new beginnings. I don't know about you, but I like the sound of that. And I like the thought of that. Paul tells us what, what, what this newness is looks like in 2 Corinthians 5. He says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. In giving us the gift of reconciliation at Christmas, our past isn't held against us any longer. How does that sound for a good gift? Because I don't know about you, but I do know about me. And I know that my life has been marked by poor decisions and stupid decisions, bad decisions, and hurtful words and hateful actions. And what God says is that even though I have messed it up at the coming of Christ into the world, He's giving me another chance today. And another chance tomorrow. And another chance the day after that. Until the day that I breathe my last breath, every day is a new day to start fresh in the presence of my God. That's good news. That's the good news of Christmas. Is that what we have earned through all of our misdeeds, not only does God not hold them against us, but the Scripture says He remembers them no more. Our transgressions are gone, lost from the history of the world, blotted out for all of eternity. We are set right through the birth of the child Jesus. I don't know. It doesn't sound like that excites you very much, but it excites the heck out of me. I mean, I'm not at the end of my life, I don't think, but I've got a lifetime of, uh, of mess-ups that I hope none of you ever find out about. And yet, Scripture says God knows them all. And He chooses not to hold them against me. God made the effort to renew, to restore the union that was broken because of my sin. And then he goes on. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God. I didn't work it. It wasn't because of me that I finally pulled it together. All this is from God who... Man. Who through Christ reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making His appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake He made Him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. God took the initiative. God put out the effort to reconcile us to Himself. But wait, folks, that's not all. There's more. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. As though God Himself were declaring to the people around us, be reconciled to God through our very mouths and our very lives. 
There are many that profess this belief in original sin. And while I understand the thinking and where it comes from, I have to say I disagree. Because I don't think it's biblical. I don't think it could be any further from the truth. We were created, at the start of the book, it says that we were created by God and it was good. We were created in original righteousness. Certainly we were given free will to choose, and that's what we did. We chose and we chose poorly. But we were created in original righteousness. We were made for union and communion, not only with God, but for with one another. We weren't created for animosity or enmity or discord. We were created for harmony. We were made to get along and to be united as our unique roles, uh, as the image bearers of God. Fallen nature might compel us to discord. There is a fragment that remains of our created being that drives us to relationship. Let, let me explain. And, and, and I've shared this before, I think. But, but to me, this kind of sums it up in a, in a perfect little way. When, when Hunter was just a baby and Bailey wasn't around, and, and it, was, it was amazing. And I, I remember... I mean, Bailey made it better. <laughs> I have to say that. Whether I believe it or not. Uh, but... But we were sitting there and the Christmas tree was going and we were probably watching some corny Christmas movie and and we were just having one of those Sunday nights where where you just spent time together and it was fun. It's a rare time anymore. But but Hunter was was just, I mean, tiny. and, And he jumped up on the couch and he was smiling at his mommy and mommy was laying there and the next thing you know, Hunter just jumped down and he headbutted Bert right in the face. Hey, he didn't learn that from me. I'm smart enough not to mess with Bert because she can, she can turn real quick. <laughs> but I, I, it about knocked Bert out. It was that bad. And, and, I, and I sat down on the couch and I said, Hunter, what, what were you thinking? You've hurt your mom. Tell her you're sorry. You know what he said? No. And so I, I said, son, I, I'm going to give you spanking if you don't say you're sorry. And he said, no. And so I threw him over the little footrest thing and I gave him three little... I, 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 I wasn't abusing my child. <laughs> this is going on Facebook or YouTube, so i got to make sure that... It wasn't abuse, but I just gave him three little swats as, a, as kind of this physical reminder that he's not the boss. And, and I sat him back up and I said, Son, tell her you're sorry. And he said, No. So we went back to where we had been before and I gave him three more little swats. And I sat him back up. And I said, Tell her you're sorry. He said, No. And this went on. And everything in me is thinking, this kid is going to hate me for the rest of his life. What I'm doing now is permanent damage and he will never love me again. That's on this side. On this side, I'm thinking if I give in to him, he's going to know that eventually he can withstand and outlast me and he can get away with whatever he wants. This side won. And we went back down and went, psh, 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 sit him back up. And, no, and, and that went on for, it seemed like, for an eternity. He probably got up to 19 or 20 licks. I don't know. Uh, never left a mark, any of that stuff. It's okay. I, I remember it ended with Bert sitting on the couch, half conscious. She had tears running down her face. And she said, for the love of God, Hunter, please just say it. Because she knew, and finally he said, I'm sorry, Mommy. And I left the living room, and I went into the kitchen, and I just looked out at the doors into the backyard thinking, my kid would never speak to me again. Our relationship was broken, and it would not be made right. That's what I thought. Within three minutes, I had these little arms wrapped around my leg. 
And I look down and Hunter's standing there and he just looks up and he says, Daddy, Daddy, I'm so sorry. Do you still love me? We reconciled at that moment. That's what God has done for us. That's what God has done. Only He didn't go stand by the door after we had gone against His desires, after we had been disobedient. God didn't go stand by the door and look out the window and wait for us to come back to Him and say, Dad, I'm sorry. Do you still love me? He went ahead and took matters into His own hand and He sent Christ to us to reconcile that which was broken. Are you reconciled with God through Jesus Christ? Because if you miss that, you miss the entire meaning of Christmas. Some people go a lifetime of trying to be good enough before they come to God, of trying to clean themselves up enough before they come to God. And the reality is we'll never be good enough. We'll never be clean enough. We'll never be right enough to earn our place with God. Jesus came to make things right, to do what we could not do for ourselves. Do you know Jesus? And have you accepted If so, proceed to the next question. What about your other relationships? Jesus came to set those right. Not only do we go out and compel the world to be reconciled to God, but we are to be working at reconciliation in every relationship that we have. We as witnesses of God's work, Do you have broken relationships that need the presence of the Christ child to to saturate or to permeate? Are there broken relationships that hold you back from bearing the full image of Christ that God has created you to bear? Just as God has sent Christ into the world to, to set us right, He sent Christ into us so that we might be right with those around us. The powerful words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, while they speak of the moment, they find fulfillment in this work of Christ. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. At Christmas, Jesus brought peace between us and God. And at Christmas, Jesus sends us out to make peace among the ranks of humanity. Where is their brokenness? And how can you bring peace? The baby in the manger commissions us to go be at peace and to make and to work for peace in the world. Christmas time we open a number of gifts, but none as powerful as this gift of reconciliation. Do you know this gift? May we pray. Our God, this morning, as we come to a close today, we are grateful that while we were so distant from You, You came running back to us to make things right. Though You had done no wrong, though You had not disobeyed the commands that were before us, It's all on us, God, and yet You made the effort. So at Christmas, we thank You, O Father, not just for sending sweet baby Jesus into the world, but for sending the Reconciler on our behalf. For taking our sins and washing them away, of of throwing them away and remembering them no more, O God, we are grateful for this gift in Jesus that we have before us. We pray, O God, that in the same way we might strive to see peace just as Christ came to set us at peace with You. 
This is our prayer this morning in Christ's name. Amen.